Hello, hello, hello. Hope everybody's doing good today. It's pretty nice out here for me on this nice Thursday. Uh, I was supposed to post last week, I guess, but turns out I don't know how to count to four. That's probably because I'm French. There's a tree in the way. Uh, I got a jellyfish fossil that was found. That's pretty cool. Uh, I got some butterflies that migrate less in the UK, and I've also got a little article about water drought going on in our kind of the whole planet, really. So first and foremost, hit like, comment, subscribe, whatever you you know, whatever you want to do if you guys enjoyed it. But I'm um, gonna go into this. So the oldest jellyfish fossil found. So this is a picture of it. It's just a rendering, obviously, because these jellyfish don't exist anymore. But the Royal Ontario Museum has found a new jellyfish fossil encased in rock that is about 505 million years old. Now that's pretty old. It's deemed the Burgess Shale jellyfish, namely because it's from the Burgess Shale, which is a very important fossil deposit area due to its ability to preserve fossils nicely. Now typically you don't find a lot of jellyfish fossils. Um, they're one of the first groups of animals to thought to have ever have evolved. But there's hardly any fossils because they're like 95% water, so it's not something that you can really find all that much. But luckily here we have one, and it's very old. Um, they've evolved to a two-part life cycle, and it's present in this ancient fossil as well. So jellyfish haven't really changed as much with throughout the years, but that's pretty cool. Um, they are nice. They sting you. Some are pretty bad, I guess. Maybe they're not so nice. They're kind of a pain in the ass at times when you go to the beach. But yeah, no, so it's a really good fossil that we have. I'm going to go on to the butterfly now. So the butterflies, the red admiral butterfly, have decided to migrate less and less. Typically, they migrate to the UK for the summer, and over the winter periods, they're back in southern Europe and Africa. Their numbers have increased 175,000 compared to last year. Some say it's because of the warmer climate, you know, it's warmer in the UK for longer, so they stick around more. And from July 14th to August 2nd, their numbers were up 400%. Now, for anybody that participates in the stock market, you know that that is some impressive growth. And, you know, they say with climate change here to stay, uh, these butterflies might make UK their permanent home. So it's more butterflies for the UK. I don't mind them. I don't live in the UK, but... I very much enjoy butterflies. Now, the main article here is the water droughts. So 25 countries use 80% of their water supply every year. It accounts for 25% of the global population who's typically affected. And the worst locations for the water stress are Northern Africa and the Middle East, which makes sense. It's very like deserty-ish areas. Uh, it's basically used for everything like irrigating crops, livestock, you know, industry, household needs, basically everything we use water for, we're just running out a little bit in different areas around the world. Um, some blame, you know, population growth, economic development, and climate change make the situation worse. It's expected to get worse, and uh, the water demand supposedly going to increase by 20 to 25% by 2050. So we're going to have more demand and less water, which is not ideal. Currently, around 60% of the world's agriculture is affected by water stress, the worst being sugarcane, wheat, rice, and corn, which are some pretty name brands. You know, we use those a lot in a lot of different cultures. The water demand in Europe and North America has plateaued, but that's because they've invested in the efficiency of uh, the water systems a little bit more. A lot of countries' GDP growth will be negatively affected by this and slowed down due to a lack of water, so... We're talking more, I don't want to say third world countries, but a little bit. You know, we've got India, Mexico, Egypt, and Turkey. You know, these aren't places that are already huge in terms of GDP, but the lack of water and the scarcity of it becoming worse and worse, it's not ideal for them. Um, something I personally hadn't thought about was the fact that the cooling of thermal power stations requires a lot of water. So between 2017 and 2021, we lost enough power because of water shortages equivalent to powering of 1.5 million homes. That's actually a decent amount that was like just stopped just because there wasn't enough water. So not the best. So some solutions that are being thrown around, you know, out of agriculture efficiency improvements. So, you know, managing to use less water in our agriculture, which is would be good because we do do a lot of agriculture. Uh, reusing our wastewater more, so cleaning up the water better and then reusing more of it. Uh, desalinization, so like, you know, ocean water, which makes sense. We have a lot of ocean water, so we can just get the salt out. But that does use a lot of electricity for the most part to get it out. 
And uh, they also said uh, removing water, thirsty plants and grass, which I thought was interesting. So just plants and grass that consume a lot of water for no reason. Let's just get rid of it, guys. Let's just light it up with all these uh, with all these fires recently. Hey, let's just light some grass on fire. But speaking of that, though, I would like to say uh, rest in peace to the fallen people in Hawaii. That's a, it's, it's a pretty big fire. It's pretty bad. So, you know, send our condolences and our our wishes for them to get better because it's not a great situation out there being on an island that's on fire. It's, it's not great. But anyways, I hope you guys have a good day and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.